In the last 50 years, the climate has changed so rapidly that we're starting to see feedback systems that will intensify the magnitude of climate change. The first feedback system I want to discuss is the extent of the Arctic ice cap. The ice cap freezes over every winter, but it thaws out to a certain extent every summer. And the long-term minimum is shown in this yellow line. So this is Russia over here, this is Canada over here, Greenland here. And usually there's an ice cap that reaches all the way across between these different continents. But lately we've been seeing that the amount of ice at the end of summer is far less than before. If we plot this out month by month, typically the ice would melt down to where there would only be about six or seven million square kilometers, but that's a lot more than we're seeing now. In the last few years, there's only about four million square kilometers of ice. Now, this is important because ice and snow reflect sunshine back into space, preventing the absorption of heat. But water absorbs more heat from sunshine than the ice and snow, and so that allows the sun now to warm up the ocean at the North Pole. Not just the Arctic ice cap, but another huge source of reflectance is the ice cap on top of Greenland, the Greenland ice sheet. And with the extraordinarily warm weather that we've been having in the last decade or so, the top layer of ice across all the Greenland ice sheet actually melted. That doesn't mean the whole ice sheet melted itself, but there was standing water on top of the whole ice sheet in July of last year. Now, this is going to result in another thing. That is, as this ice is now melting, it's going to feed off of the continents into the oceans, and sea levels will continue to rise. And in fact, oceans have risen two inches just in the last 17 years. This is sea level around the world, and this is showing what's happened over the last 17 years, and the net difference here is two inches, which may not sound like much, but as time goes on, the rate of ice melting and sea level rising is likely to accelerate. Large areas of the Earth at high latitudes are what are called permafrost. The land is always frozen below a certain depth. There's vast areas of permafrost through Siberia, northern Canada, and the edges of Greenland. Now, what's been happening lately is that this permafrost, which ordinarily supports above it brief growing seasons of small amounts of organic material, the permafrost beneath has been starting to melt. And so there's subsidence. This subsidence is actually a very worrying development. We're seeing trees that are starting to move sideways because the ground below them is no longer stable. The thawing permafrost sets up a second feedback system. On top of the permafrost, plants are barely able to grow, but they've been growing there for a long period of time. And as they have grown, they have been absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, like all good plants do. But then all of their carbon is trapped in the frozen soil. And so on that ice box, you're getting a buildup, buildup of this permafrost ecosystem. The soil layers that are formed by permafrost and have done so over the millennia now contain twice as much carbon as is currently present in the entire atmosphere. As the permafrost thaws, the carbon is escaping, and it's being released in the form of CO2 and methane. So as we see these drunken trees, we also see bubbles coming out of lakes. This is because the permafrost is thawing, and now this can become biologically active, the stuff rots, the CO2 goes into the atmosphere. Where the permafrost has been thawing, huge quantities of methane have been produced. As we can see in this video, the bubbles escaping are flammable. They're methane. And methane is a powerful greenhouse gas. It absorbs 70 times as much heat as carbon dioxide. The thawing of the permafrost across vast stretches of Siberia and northern Canada are very worrying. Degrading the top three meters of permafrost would in fact release between 30 and 60 billion tons of carbon on top of the 200 billion tons that have been produced from fossil fuels. And another very large scale 
feedback system, the oceans. The oceans absorb huge amounts of CO2, but warm seawater holds less carbon dioxide. And as the ocean warms up, much of the CO2 that's been safely held by the ocean will be released into the atmosphere. And you can understand this intuitively if you've ever had exposure to cold beer or a cold soda, which holds carbon dioxide very, very well. It's carbonated drinks. But if it's warm, it doesn't hold nearly as much CO2. And that's what will happen with the ocean eventually. All the CO2 that's currently being absorbed will be released into the atmosphere. The melting of the polar ice cap, the thawing of the permafrost, and the release of CO2 from the Earth's oceans are enormous. And these large-scale feedbacks will accelerate global warming in future years.